When I think of Steve Bannon and his effect on the agenda, what he tried to do with the agenda, John, remember talking about uh, taxing the rich with a, a four handle, raising taxes on the rich, an isolationist, right? Didn't want to get involved in North Korea and made clear in the recent interview that he doesn't like the tough talk. And also, much, much tougher line with China. So there are potential changes going on here, depending on the degree to which you think he had any kind of influence on each of those topics. Well, that's exactly the right question, Michelle. And the reason that I think it's not likely at this point uh, to make much difference is that most of the things that Steve Bannon was enthusiastic about were things that Donald Trump was enthusiastic about. And his bringing in Bannon reflected their shared worldview more than Bannon's influence on Trump. So when it comes to, China, to uh, uh, international trade, this is something Donald Trump's talked about for a very long time. He's talked about immigration and matters related to race for a long time. Uh, now, I, I do think you note the uh, forehandle on tax reform. He talked about trying to counter those Democratic attacks, but he appeared to have lost that uh, internal argument. And Donald Trump certainly has been in favor of lower taxes uh, pretty consistently. In fact, the plans that he uh, floated in the campaign, uh, several iterations of them, all had the, the top rate coming down significantly for both uh, personal taxpayers and for business. Mm -hmm. When I think about trade in particular, there's still Peter Navarro in there and there's still Wilbur right. Ross, right? So those are still, when it comes to the trade agenda, very, very hard on China. I should just say, Michelle, I also just talked to a uh, top Republican strategist on Capitol Hill, said, what difference do you think this is going to make? And the answer was, not sure it makes much difference unless it turns out that Bannon was secretly writing Trump's tweets all this time. So uh, I, I don't think that's the case. It's more likely that uh, if anybody was ghostwriting him, it was Dan Scavino, the digital director in the White House. But uh, we're just going to have to see whether or not um, Bannon's departure means that John Kelly, with the exception of the Twitter account, the new chief of staff, is somehow able to impose a different um, flavor to the entire White House staff and to make the president uh, eat that food. I'm not sure he will. You know, John, we also need to look ahead for a potential government shutdown in October. The, mm -hmm. debt, the debt ceiling limit must be raised. Goldman Sachs has a 50% probability that we will have at least some kind of brief government shutdown. Mm -hmm. Do you think that this departure does impact at all the negotiations over the debt ceiling and the likelihood of a government shutdown? I don't, actually, Brian. Uh, you know, the president's got... Mick Mulvaney, uh, the budget director, who is a point person. Uh, Steve Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary, who uh, is another point person on this. They have in the past articulated different views, although M M Mulvaney has lately gone to Mnuchin's view to say we want a clean uh, debt limit. But just as I was about to uh, sit in front of this camera, the Freedom Caucus uh, w is reported to be divided on whether it's going to try to hold up the debt ceiling in return for a uh, policy concession. So there is no strategy, no uh, clear path right now to either con extending fun funding of the government beyond the September 30th end of the 2017 fiscal year or to raising that debt limit. And Republicans in the past have shown that it's very difficult for them to uh, ably manage that issue. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.